Let's talk about color consistency. It is important for various reasons. One, for you being recognized for your own work among everybody else. Second, if you're somebody who continuously work on presets, presettings, and any type of gradients, you want to be able to keep the same level for any of your photos. If you work with different cameras, you want all of those cameras to give you a consistent look. Or if you're doing commercial work and you want the most accurate photos, especially in fashion when it comes to showcasing the clothing that the fashion brand is selling, you want to keep those colors accurate to the eye level. And today I'm going to show you how you can keep the banging consistency on every single of your photos using few simple tools. Spider checker and spider cube. Let's go into it. Spider cube is a great tool to set your correct exposure, especially in multiple lights up scenarios and combinations. You can set any type of exposure you want with this little guy, which is also kind of cute. And if you ask me, that could make a great keychain. I mean, no one said I cannot do this. And also, if you don't like someone, you can send them to the pit of despair. Why are you thinking dirty things right now? Don't, you dirty little nugget. Spider Checker is 48 specially designed color patches combined with a Spider Checker software to calibrate those colors into your shots and make sure your color grading is on point. See, with those two tools, you can A, use your spider cube to set the correct exposure for your scene and then use a spider checker to create your color grading how accurate you want to be or how, how artistic you want it to be you can all do that with just those two tools that also work sim sim so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to the studio have my main take some shots of me and then we're gonna take a reference photo for this photo shoot using the cube and the spider checker. Take it back to here to do some calibration. Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home. Need to be strong every part. Okay, so that part is done. Let's actually take the photos now to that room and actually show you. Oh, we are. <laughs> we need to take a photo with a color card. <laughs> never mind. So, what do I can take a photo with? <laughs> Let's catch up in a second. Breath hold, cause I can't move on till I let go. I this is quite easy to use setup, obviously. Looks like a book. It is a book ish. You have 48 colors, which I'm gonna explain in a second. But also, you have the actual great card in here. I thought having nails it helps, but nope. So, apart from the, all the colors, you have a great card, which is basically doing the same thing as the cube. The Can't move on till I let go. I feel so lost, never at home. Need to be strong, every breath of. Cause I can't move on till I let go. How to read a color checker. Column number H, that's your neutral tones. Column G, the saturated tones. F, you have all your primary and secondary colors. So you have cyan, yellow, teal, green, and blue. Your column D and E, those columns are basically your gray tones from 100% white in one E, then 20% white, 40%, 60%, 80%, and 100% black. Ouch. 
And column number C, that is your skin tones. Not enough skin tones if you ask me, but hey, that will do. B, that's your brights and darks, really. Column A, that's your HSL colors. So you have the same colors as you would have them in HSL slider in Lightroom. Your reds, yellows, greens, aquas, blues, and magentas. Also at the back, you have your gray card. Then you have your cube, which is very useful to setting on the correct exposure. You have the whites, you have the shadow side, blacks, and also the true black that was so, is supposed to be set through the hole in here. So we've done a few photos in a studio, as you can see. Oh, I look cute. I like that. Damn, that peach. Look at that. You hold in a card, but this is obviously BTS. This is not the reference photo that you need this is the reference photo that you need. So what we're doing now, I'm gonna start with the cube first. So we are in our develop settings. I am just gonna crop it a little bit. Done. What you want to do is set your exposure first and then color gray. And what is happening in here, as you can see, we had just one light. I had one beauty dish to my right, so on this, this side, which is why this side is brighter than the other side. This was just filled and reflected back from the beauty dish, I had a white polyboard that reflected the light onto that space. If you see, the beauty dish is lighting all of our scene just in here, and the polyboard is reflecting a little bit back to have that fill on the other side of my face. So what we're doing now is literally taking this one and setting this point as our pure white. And there you go. That is already looking way better. Even the skin tone is looking better. You can do the same thing with adjusting the other colors. This should be your pure black infinity, literally a black hole of black holes. Nothingness exists in there. I'm gonna keep the white slightly a bit more, just tiny bit. And then just because I personally like a bit more punchiness, a bit more contrast to my photos, so I'm just gonna spread it out. <laughs> but you can do it whatever the fuck you want. That is the beauty of it. But with the blacks, I'm gonna take it slightly down, but so I can still see this hole in here. So like minus four would be great. And then my shadows, I'm just gonna take it slightly down minus nine. Exposure is set. I am gonna create a preset. Name spider cube white white balance test. So now when I go to actual photo, the just corrected exposure. That's it. Okay, so this is what we have. And now on top of that, I want to build a color grading. So I have my colors right in here, and you can do this in two ways. You can either use the spider checker software that is provided, wait a minute, that is provided with you on the back. I'm not gonna show you the serial number that I got, but it is in here. Also, uh, don't ever give me anything to unbox because I will, I will destroy it before I can actually show it. So anybody that wants to work with me, unboxing is not my thing. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can do this without the software. You already know what all of those columns and rows represent. 
So now it's time to adjust it. The shots that I've done, I wanted them to be colorful, very Bristolian, I would say. Something that is definitely totally opposite to what I would normally do, which is a challenge for me too. We had some aquas in the background, which is a beautiful background, one of my favorites, I think, in, in, in the studio. So now we're gonna adjust column A, because column A is our HSL sliders. So we're going from the basic to the HSL slider and we will gonna adjust those colors in here. Also what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply that preset that we've just done because we're gonna update it, update that preset with this color grading settings. Because this is the exposure that I will want and then on top of that, we're going to add some colors. There is significant reds in my shop because I am wearing a red top. There is a aqua background behind me. I have slightly orange hair faded out, but never mind. Yes, I will go to a hairdresser at some point, okay? And then, of course, my skin tones are a mix of yellow and orange, so this is what we will have to calibrate. First of all, with the reds, how I want my red to be. So I can have a look literally just on that red in here, how I want it a bit more punchy. So I'm gonna leave it at 14. And then my skin tones, let's just have a look. I kind of want them not too orange, maybe like 13, something like that. The greens, roll number three. So there's not really a lot of greens apart from my pants, but I want it to stand out as much as possible. And by the way, I'm literally started adjusting with saturation. On the aqua side of things, I, I want it really saturated. I want it to be punchy. And then with the blues, just so it matches and gives that extra punch to the background. Purples and magentas, not too much of it in the image but I want to control it a little bit. And when it comes to the hue, uh, take the oranges up. I will want them a little bit, not too green, because if I go all the way, it will look green, which you can nicely see in here, but a nice middle, like a 40, 63 is great. Yellows, I will not push too much, but I'll push like 31. Greens, I to 18. And then when it comes to aqua, so my background, just push it down more towards the blues. And then again, magentas and purple. I'm not really gonna do much with that. Yeah, and when it comes to luminance, when it comes to skin, I'm trying to like add a little, just a little, not too much. So oranges and yellow will have a bit more luminance to me just because I want that healthy glow, okay? Update with current settings. So we're updating everything on that very preset that we've just done with our color grading and our HSL color. And we're gonna just apply that preset that we've just made and calibrate it using, using the spider checker. There you go, that's it. It's a slight change and that is a change enough for you to save your own time. I personally like darker photos, so this works for me perfectly. This photo, same. I'm just gonna apply the preset. There you go, another one, bang. But all in all, that is it. Saved you so much time in editing, job done. Any great conclusion. If you're gonna get it, and if you're not gonna use it, then what's the point, right? But if you're gonna get it and use it, use it to your advantage, because You've seen the way that I've just color graded, right? You can do it with the software to keep really natural look, or you can calibrate it completely differently. And then on top of that, you can do your own calibration, your own color grading that is artistic, creative, and develop your style over time. There's no better way today to start learning about color grading than actually fucking doing it. There's so many tools that you can use to your advantage to make sure that your color grading is on point and then it grows in time 
with more experience that you have while shooting. And at the end of the day, it's also your artistic way of seeing things that matters. You know what's best for your photos, you know what's best for your art, you know how you want like to shoot. Everybody shoots differently, like oh, I shoot a bit underexposed and I like it. I also like dark photos. But someone who is shooting more commercial, bright lights stuff, they will have their like software calibrated completely differently. And it's okay. That's their artistic vision. Mine is mine. That's again how you should be viewing your work. And that's it for today's lesson on how to color grade using Spider. Your next photo shoot, you're gonna smash it, work on your color, color grading, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share as this really helps me develop this channel. So see you on the next one. <laughs>